there gets to a point when you just have to do it. You can't do any more learning. You can't do any more business courses. You just have to go and do it. Hi, my name is Callum with a K and welcome to this week's episode of Student Enterprise TV, your weekly source of inspiration, practical tips and nonsense to help you on your entrepreneurial journey. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest, Ella, who's the founder of Merry Intimates. Say hello, Ella. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Uh, how are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, very enjoying the sunshine, actually. It's quite nice. Until we asked you to close the blinds. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the one bit of sun, we're like, you're not having it, you're not having any joy, joy of it this year in 2021. <laughs> uh, Ella, tell us about you, please. Kind of what's your story? How did Mary Intimates get started? Just give us as much detail as you want to give us. Okay, um, so my name's Ella, I'm 25, I'm from London. Um, I studied furniture and product design at university and since graduating in 2018, I've sort of worked for a lot of different design studios and artists as, as an assistant um, and have always known that I wanted to start my own business. It just was never fully clear to me what that should be. Um, I've complained about women's underwear since I was about 16. Um, when I first suffered from a UTI and at the time I didn't know what that infection was my friend had at school had to tell me I think this is what you have um, and since then I went through a period of suffering from recurring infections which were really really horrible and, and really affected me and I'd go through a strange cycle of I'd get an infection I'd have to take antibiotics and then from the antibiotics you that I then would get thrush which is another sort of another um problem which women face um, and so I'd always be told by doctors to wear cotton underwear um, and I could never ever find cotton underwear on the market that I liked and so kind of after there was kind of a combination of me complaining for a very long time about the lack of women's underwear that was made from cotton that was also sexy and, and flattering and aesthetically pleasing and then on the other hand I was looking for a business that I wanted to start by myself um, and it kind of fell into place of it got to the point of me being like, I'm sick of having no underwear and I'm sick of working for other people. Um, and that's where Mary properly, properly began, I guess. Nice one. Thanks for sharing that. I think that's a very common thing that a lot of people will resonate with that literally you experience something yourself. You can't find a solution to like, right, I'm going to create the solution myself to this problem. Exactly. And I think after complaining about it for eight years, almost, I'd spoken to so many other people who had the same <laughs> problem that it was like, no, I don't think this is just me. I think that this is worth worth tackling. Good. And you've done something about it, which is awesome. <laughs> and you said in your intro there that you'd always known that you wanted to start your own business. Where do you think that comes from? Like, have you got an entrepreneurial family or background or where do you think that sort of spark came from? Um, not at all. I don't have it. I don't think there's no one in my family who's been entrepreneurial. I don't believe. <laughs> um, I just really have always been quite stubborn, I think, probably. Um, and I always have worked very effectively on my own deadlines. Um, I really like thrived at university, creating my own design process, my own timetable. Um, and I've just sort of in all of the experiences of working since university, I've, I've never found that kind of in the same way. Um, and sort of, I've just known that I'm better when I can just make my own choices and, and take the consequences of them good or bad. Yeah, that's brilliant. That mindset's so important that, that ownership, we spoke about that a lot on this channel before about, you know, as a business owner, or indeed any successful person, you have to just take ownership of your life. It's not the weather's fault. It's not whatever else's fault. You have to own it, both the good yeah, and the bad. Completely. And when was the moment you decided to go all in on Mary? Like, was, was there a moment or was it kind of a series of episodes or was it like a day where you're like, right, I'm going to try this 100% and just give it my all? Um. So I'm still, I feel like I'm still not 100% in Mary as in because I still work part time. Um, but the moment there was a there was a moment that I was uh, registered to do a course with the Prince's Trust, the Explore Enterprise course. Um, and that was still a point where I was like, I want my own business, but I don't quite know what it's going to be. 
Um, and up to that point, I'd been designing bags, um, <laughs> vegan bags. And so I, I kind of thought, I think maybe I'm going to go and expand this. Maybe I could sell them through Etsy or something like that. And I woke up the morning of the course and just was like, no, that's not what I want to do. I want to do pants. That's what I'm going to do. Um, and kind of changed my whole mindset about it and went to the Prince's Trust, did a five day course focusing on how I would make Mary a thing, which at the time wasn't called Mary. It didn't have a name. Um, and sort of that was the kind of catalyst. And then during the first lockdown, I lost my job um, and I was living at home with my parents. And that gave me a lot of time to kind of put in the groundwork um at the same time looking for a job um so it's kind of yeah it's it's been a slow sort of I'm trying to think that this is my what I do for money and this is what I do because I love it and I'm hoping this bit will get bigger and this bit will get smaller and they'll become one <laughs> yeah I love that and again I think so many folk need to hear this that you don't need to go all in in the beginning there's this really bad myth that you have to quit your job straight away and just jump straight to with both feet whereas what you're doing is you're being sensible just kind of having both because you need to survive so I think if we can do anything which is to just eradicate this myth that you have to go on in the start it would be a really good thing so it's good it's <laughs> cool it's cool so cool yeah. um what has been the biggest challenge so far with developing Mary and I'm sure there have been many and in fact we know each other a bit because I um, did some mentoring on the Launchpad Accelerator down in London, Met University, uh, when you were part of that. So I kind of have an insight here, but just for the people, the millions of people watching, <laughs> <laughs> what's been the biggest challenge so far? Um, I find, yeah, I do find this question really hard. I think the biggest, the main one was actually just beginning like that day that I decided to go to the Prince's Trust and start talking about that idea as if it was my business that was the hardest bit and I remember at the end of that week almost crying which sounds really over dramatic but sort of being like wow I actually made this a thing even just by saying it that that was really big for me um and then from there I think I think the balance of constantly trying to maintain the balance of working on a business and living and surviving as a human um I think that's quite an interesting balance that I don't I don't think my personality is how a lot of entrepreneurs are as in all in I'm going to work 24 hours a day and seven days a week and I'm never going to stop um but just because from my experience I've watched people do that and I don't necessarily think it's been very good for them mentally physically um, and so I am very much, I'm going to go at a slow pace and try and work this out as I go along, but maintaining that balance and sort of giving myself the time to be like, it's okay, you can't do this at hundred miles an hour um, is quite tricky. I really like that a lot. And I think that's another bad myth that, you know, it has to be 20 hours every day because that's not sustainable because as humans, we're not meant to do that either physically, mentally or spiritually. And there are other things that make us human other than work. And I think you know it's so important to find that balance and everyone's got their own path I think it's so important to find your own path and it's difficult when you have this Instagram world where everyone's life looks so perfect and they've got it all figured out whereas the truth is no one has a clue what they're doing most of the time yeah so a <laughs> spoiler alert yeah <laughs> <laughs> just got some dreams right there <laughs> um casual glance at the questions because I'm such a professional uh again I know a bit of this and you also just covered it in your intro, but again, briefly sum up how uh, Mary is different to the competitors. Okay, um, so Mary is a women's underwear brand producing solely pants uh, made from majority organic cotton. Um, so the focus of Mary is to produce pants which are comfortable as well as sexy. Um, in my opinion, the underwear market at the moment divides into two quite distinct categories, as in sexy lingerie, which is generally made out of uh, synthetic nylon, elast very elasticated, um, yeah, in that, that way. And on the other side, you have cotton underwear, which is could be described by some as, as quite granny pants. They're often quite big. I personally don't find them very flattering or have struggled to find pairs which are flattering. Um, and so we are sliding into the middle. So Mary has a elongated 
organic cotton gusset, which is a very important part of women's underwear, but a part which is often neglected. So it's the small panel of cotton which goes between your legs. Um, and that is a breathable fabric because the uh, a female vulva should be protected by a breathable natural fabric, particularly if you're sensitive down there. Um, and this is often in kind of more sexy underwear. This piece of cotton is cut too short. Um, and I was told, and I don't know if this is fact, but I was told by a designer that the reason that it's cut short often is because it looks better in photographs. So women's underwear has been made uncomfortable for the sake of looking nice in a photograph, which is quite mad. Um, so ours is elongated. It's kind of, it's integrated seamlessly into the, into the design. So it fits with the seams. Um, so you get the full coverage of the cotton um, for all body shapes, all body types. But at the same time, the side panels are lace. They're very aesthetically pleasing. They've got a V waistband. So they're flattering um, at the same time. Good answer. Very comprehensive. <laughs> 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 And who is the ideal audience or the target consumer for, for Mary? Um, so I guess the really any anyone who wants to wear comfy, sexy pants is that I mean, that's not the right business answer, but I would hope that anyone could wear our pants and be happy. Um, I think the t initial target audience is probably women who do are very aware of infections such as UTIs and thrush um, and do suffer from these potentially, but also care about the aesthetics of their underwear and appreciate that their underwear makes them feel more sexy, more attractive, more confident, whatever it is. Um, I think, yeah, I guess initially them, but I think all women in, in general, the majority of gynecologists and doctors recommend cotton underwear for intimate health. Um, it's something that is written on the NHS website, so recommended to help prevent thrush. Um, and so I think it's any anyone um, who wants to kind of look after themselves and at the same time feel great and look great. Cool, good answer, I guess. <laughs> Changing gears then, Ella, how well, in your opinion, did university prepare you for starting a business? Um, that's interesting. I think my course um, specifically did really prepare me for, for starting a business in the way that I had to develop a process of working by myself. Um, all pro projects were sort of, often they were live, so with a real brand. Um, they were set and then you put your own you had your own schedule and then you had to present a piece a product or whatever it was at the end um, and I think that's been so helpful for me working out kind of you know how I'm sourcing my fabric what the cost of that is where it's going to where it comes from um, all of that type of thing um, I think also my university gave me the opportunity to be a part of a kickstarter campaign um, which is really helpful. We're launching Mary through a Kickstarter campaign in the next couple of months. And I have so many learnings from the first one I did, which was very small scale, um, but I've kind of, yeah, able to, to put them onto the next one. Um, yeah. That's super exciting. So we'll watch it for that. We'll definitely yes. give that cheeky plug <laughs> when we can. Um, what is the best business advice you've been given so far? I actually think the best advice I was given um, was from Jill from Meander Apparel. Yeah. Um, so she said to me that there gets to a point when you just have to do it. You can't do any more learning. You can't do any more business courses. You just have to go and do it. And I was like, I think that really resonated with me because I've always felt like I don't know enough and I don't know, you know, I don't know how to do this yet and I don't know how to do that. And I can't present this properly, but actually you just have to learn as you go because there's only so many hypothetical situations you can go through before you just have to do the real thing. That's great. Um, and I really love that. I think um, certainly a lot of students and graduates we speak to do suffer this kind of imposter syndrome or lack of confidence or they just feel that they need to learn more because they, they know how much they don't know Whereas they should really be focused on what they do know. And as you found, 
in many ways, the best way to learn how to run a business is just to start. And you pick up so much random stuff in the way from conversations with others, um, building a website, you pick up so many intangibles about design, how a website works, how that then ties into your social media and your marketing. And yeah, I think the best way is just to get on with it. So if anyone is thinking about, I need to more experience for to do that other course, to do that, do that. But at the same time, don't let that stop you running your business or starting your business. I think it's just so important just to get started. Yeah, definitely. No, I, and I think also, I don't, I'm not trained in the area of underwear design. I'm trained in furniture design, which is completely different. But, and, and I mean, that's not the ideal situation. Obviously, I would be an expert, but I'm not. And it hasn't hindered me at all. I think that was something that really has scared me. But actually, there, if you ask people for help, people are really are, are willing to, to help you if you have a new idea. Yeah, I found that, that. I think I've said it before, but the business community, in my opinion, is one of the most welcoming, helpful, encouraging, positive communities on the planet. They really know how tough it is. And they really want to support you. And normal people who don't have a business don't understand it. And why should they? You know, your, your partner, your family, your friends, whoever. Um, whereas other business owners know what it's like. So I think that's why it's so important to, to call upon them. I would caution people watching that you know, just because it works for another business owner doesn't mean it work for you. But equally on the opposite, just because it didn't work for them doesn't mean it won't work for you. So I think the thing with advice is, you know, listen to it, but, but feel free to ignore it. Yeah, completely. And and picking and choosing what's right for you, because also I've I got went through a stage of asking so many people for advice and they'd all have a different opinion. And it means you just sort of do nothing because you don't know what's right um so definitely learning to ignore ignore advice <laughs> sometimes including this advice right here from the two yeah. of us right <laughs> it's rubbish <laughs> <laughs> my computer has just told me that the power is about to go out so I'll just plug it in i thought i had so it's going to be plenty of fun for our editing team in this video yeah i like that that's really good that's really important actually about and if you kind of got a method or even like a rule of thumb for judging advice or that's quite a big vague question yeah. not really it's I'm trying to trust my gut more um yeah, and okay. now I also I work with two other girls um who are amazing and very intelligent and so I think if all three of us agree or disagree it's a pretty good a good bet that we're on the right track yeah I would say so and in the beginning there when it was just you and then the sort of the team members joined talk us through how that worked like were you actively looking for the team or did they approach you or just how did that happen and then what's it like now having a team versus when it was just you flying solo and just talk us through that whole process um sure so i yeah i was working on my own um i think it's until about may this year last year even um i could be wrong but I was on the Launchpad course, which you spoke of earlier, um, and they were talking often about how working in a team um, has so many benefits. And my boyfriend is also starting a business or has started a business. Um, and there is three of them working together. And I'd often watch him and his sort of business meetings, the way they went through things together. And it just looked a lot more fun, really, than doing it on your own, more than anything. Um, and being able to celebrate the wins with, with other people who completely get how much of a struggle that win was. Um, and so my first, my first sort of port of call was um, my friend Amelia, who has sort of been my partner through everything through school we were always we'd manage things together we've always managed pro projects and and stage managed productions and things like that um, and we are completely opposite in our skills um, and so I went to her and was like would you be interested in in working on this with me um, and she was which was nice so <laughs> she's um, she's come on board and she's sort of very finance minded logistics operations um, whereas opposed to I'm very sort of product process design um and then from there I kind of had a serendipitous meeting with my one of my old friends from when I was very young um who'd kind of heard about Mary she'd been following the Instagram um and 
she works in advertising she's an amazing creative um doing graphic design marketing and she we had one sort of we had a beer together when you're allowed to have beers together and we sat there and she just sort of said to me everything that I wanted to say but I'm not very eloquent on social media or anything and she just completely got it straight away um and so from there we've been a little free um and it's just really yeah I think the fact that our team is everyone has their own section that they focus on is really beneficial especially because I work part-time or well 30 hours a week so quite a lot and they both work full-time still so we work together on weekends on evenings but we each have our own roles so we can always kind of divide it and know what we're focusing on. I think that's so important to have that kind of split and that team energy and that kind of you do that I'll do this and those complementary skills I think that's so essential because if a business just relies upon you there's, there's only physically so much you can take it and for some people that's fine and, and we're not here to criticize anyone's aspirations but almost challenge people to say it doesn't need to be this difficult or it doesn't need to be this way you could do it this way if you want so I think that's yeah. so cool that it happened so organically with you and it's yeah it's it really well. lucky and it's just been so much fun to be honest yeah like, working with them is so nice like having people to even be like wow it's been a really long day should we get a pizza or that that kind of thing is really important I think it makes the whole experience so much more enjoyable yeah you mentioned the f word there is so important fun I mean uh business and life should be fun so I think that you know how little fun is is life on your own so I think sharing that experience of starting a business with a team is and our customers is just so cool and uh, who knows what could happen as a result of that you know, a lot of our customers have become good friends now, uh, like genuine, you know, yeah. really good friends. And uh, as you say, it can be quite lonely at times. Just having people to share the wins and the bad times is so, so crucial. Yeah, completely, completely. Nice one. Uh, one last question, then you're off the hook, Ella. Okay. Oh. <laughs> um, again, for the millions and millions and millions of people watching this very episode of Student Enterprise TV, uh, students and graduates who either got a business idea just thinking about it or have never considered running their own business before can you give some advice to to the students and graduates please I think to just do it if you if you really believe in your idea just just try because I don't think you're ever going to regret having a go um, and I also think take it in stages I think you don't you don't need to like yeah jump in feet first there are ways of sort of working your way up to that um which i think is really important and at every stage you check on yourself is this making me happy is this working do i actually think this is going to work um and it just allows you a, a bigger safety net whereas we're living in a climate which is not particularly economically lush i don't know what the, <laughs> um so i just think that that safety is really important um but just do it and and ask people around you people really like giving advice in general so always ask love that that's some solid advice so thank you for sharing that <laughs> and then i lied there is one more question but it's a really nice friendly one to end on you've mentioned your instagram you've mentioned the website where can people find out more about mary intimates please Sure. So, so yeah, the Instagram is Mary Intimates, which is M E W R I Intimates, um, and then our website is www.maryintimates.com, spelt the same. Um, that is our landing page where you can sign up to our mailing list, which will kind of give you all the details of when our Kickstarter is going to go live, when you can buy some pants, um, and that will also all be announced on our Instagram. So, yeah, follow us, follow us, and and enjoy the journey with us. <laughs> Love that. And we'll hopefully get our very talented team to put some of that on the screen as we speak right now. Um, Ella, it's been great speaking to you. Thank you so much for your time to share your really inspiring story. Uh, again, being really open and honest with us. Really appreciate that. And just uh, it's great to hear how much you've done already. And I look forward to seeing where things go uh, in the future. So thank you again. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> pleasure. Absolute pleasure. And thank you for watching as well. Hopefully you've enjoyed this episode of Student Enterprise TV. And as ever, we look forward to seeing you right here next Tuesday.